All right, we are live. Oh, there's Shelby. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right, everyone. So welcome to Equitana USA's equestrian celebration. Of course, we were all hoping to be at the Kentucky Horse Park next weekend, but lo and behold, here we are virtually. Um, luckily, many of our presenters have been on board to share their demonstrations, performances, and just tips and tricks with us, and we have, cannot be more grateful. Um, one of our presenters, Mikhail Proctor of Florida Lee Vaulters, is here today, and he's going to be talking to us about Vaulting 101 and the Hills Property Team's vaulting experience, so we're okay. excited to learn more. And with that, Mikhail, I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Um, so just with the equestrian celebration, we've been, uh, we started today just asking for folks to send us questions. So a lot of folks have already sent in um, some questions that I will answer here. And then we're going to kind of take the day just kind of showing you bits and pieces um, of vaulting, um, a little bit behind the scenes, like definitely what life is like in the barn before we actually perform. Um, so that's going to be pretty fun. Um, but even the first question, a lot of people, they don't know what vaulting is. Um, so we'll just start there. Uh, so vaulting is described as gymnastics and dance on the back of a moving horse. Um, some people think that that sounds really out there and crazy, um, but it's actually um, one of the safer sports uh, that you can do with equestrian just because of the structure that we have uh, for the sport. And the other thing that's really nice about it is Vaulters are able to move at their own pace. Um, so you don't have to be some, you know, national gymnast or anything like that. If you just have a desire to learn um, and you like horses, um, you can do vaulting. And then the other really cool thing in comparison to the other disciplines is even in your first time, you're actually able to to the best of their ability, replicate some of the maneuvers that are happening even at the World Equestrian Games. So some of our, what are called the compulsory moves, um, which is a stage um, in our competition, um, some of those moves uh, we will teach uh, vaulters even for their first time. Um, so that's something that's a little bit different, you know, comparing that to something like jumping, it's gonna be months, weeks, maybe even years before you're going over any kind of fences, getting off the ground or anything like that. So um, I think that's just really cool. I think even once you're done after your first time, um, there's just a sense of accomplishment <laughs> um, because you've really done something that most folks haven't done before. Um, and so with that said, uh, we had the Grayson on 27, um, apartment community with Hills Properties. They all came out and tried vaulting for the first time. Uh, so we have our leasing consultant, Shelby, on. And so we're just going to have Shelby, I even have some questions that some people have. Um, but first, I just wanted to let Shelby go ahead and just share your experience, what you liked about it, was it what you're expecting, uh, this, that, and the other. So Shelby, it's all you. So I don't really know what I was expecting going into it, <laughs> but so whenever we first got there, um, he had us do all of the moves just with the horse standing there. And I kind of thought that that's all we were going to do, but we did all of our different poses and everything. And then he said, okay, we're going to do it with Goliath moving around, which I was not expecting that, but yeah, it was really fun. It was something that, like you said, you know, whenever you first like do it you think like I there's no way that I'm going to be able to do this kind of thing but it was really cool and we had by the end of it me and Mikkel were doing some moves together and I was hanging off of the side and yeah it was crazy it was really fun excellent so that's actually one of the questions here um someone asked what was your favorite part of your vaulting experience Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely just doing something that I wouldn't have thought was possible doing. And I think too, like, it's scary just thinking about it. But once you actually get up there on the horse, like especially Goliath, he was so good, you know, he was very sturdy. <laughs> and I felt <laughs> safe up there too, like I wasn't gonna fall or anything. So it's definitely more scary until you actually get up there and do it. Excellent. Then another question is, um, 
do you think that this is something that you would try again? And how far would you go with vaulting if you continued? 100%. I'm waiting for the next invitation to the farm. And I don't I mean, because we did, I stood on there, which that was like probably the toughest thing to do with keeping your balance. So I feel like the next time around, focusing more on, you know, the intermediate level things would be fun. But yeah, I would definitely do it again. Excellent. Then another question was, um, did you feel out of place um, in comparison to the rest of the team? <laughs> It's an interesting I, question. <laughs> uh -huh. Compared to my team that I was with, I did not feel out of place. I felt like I did an amazing job. But then seeing Mikel get up there and kind of show <laughs> us the level that he is at, I did feel out of place with that. <laughs> but yeah, it was with the people I was with and everything, it felt like we were all on the same level and it wasn't daunting or anything. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you, Shelby, if you don't mind mm -hmm. me interrupting, Mikhail. Mm -hmm. Go um, ahead. In terms of your physical strength, what did you feel like you were using the most? Is this a lot of upper body, you know, everything? <laughs> for, I felt like, I felt it a lot, like, in my thighs, my upper legs. That was uh, just trying to keep balance and everything. That was, like, the main where I was like, I'm definitely getting a workout with this right now. Did you wake definitely up sore the next day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Mm -hmm. And then let's see, what's this other question here? It says, um, if you were to try this again, um, what new move would you want to try? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, hmm. I felt like we could have done better. There was one like you were fully standing and then I was like on my knees trying to balance like one leg out to something along the lines of that one. That kind of felt like the toughest one that we did because it was just all mm -hmm. straight balance, which mm -hmm. I don't really have. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, this one's a fun one. Um, if you were to compete, what would your costume look like? <laughs> oh man that's a good one I mean you know I want to say something like Beyonce related but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you got to throw me out some ideas I, I've seen your avatar costume so that I feel like that's a tough one to beat but Beyonce on horseback would be cool <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> that would be a sight I would uh -huh. say. <laughs> Definitely. All righty. Um, and let's see, the last question down, some of these, a lot of them are repeats. Um, let's see. This one's kind of your um, experience with Goliath. Um, how do you think he compares to other horses that you have met, if you've met any? Um, the last time I met one, I mean, that was probably 10 years ago, but at, with Goliath, though, everything was just, he was very calm, so I didn't feel, you know, scared whatsoever whenever we were around him and, you know, standing mm -hmm. close to him whenever he was getting showered off and things like that, too, so mm -hmm. he was definitely a good first horse to attempt my vaulting at. <laughs> Yeah. Mikhail, I have a question yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody wants to see their vaulting improve, even as just a beginner, you already mentioned how quickly you can see improvement. Mm -hmm. um, but if they really want to kind of dive into the sport, how often would you recommend they take lessons? So really, it's a, that's a very, very good question. Um, what I've always told even my vaulters, and I didn't say it for myself, um, most of the training is actually done off of the horse. Um, so this is where the cross training benefits start to come in. So um, there's actually a little series on here that we're gonna do talking about just um, doing yoga as a cross training activity. Um, just anything that's physically challenging your body, 
um, is going to be helpful when it comes to vaulting. Obviously, there's, you know, time on the horse is everything, but then we also have to realize that the horses are not machines and there's only so many circles <laughs> that they can do, um, especially within one practice and even if it's a group practice. So, you know, being able to vault, you know, at least once or twice a week um, is definitely something that's going to keep you in a regular rhythm. Um, but really, the majority of your training is going to be done off of the horse. And so, um, like I said, let's doing yoga. There's some folks that have gymnastics backgrounds, um, people that like to run and do hiking, um, going to the gym, um, however your workout routine is. Um, and then just kind of pinpointing based off of the moves that you're trying to improve on, you're going to be looking at what cross training things are going to be the most beneficial for you um, to help with those moves. So like one thing, um, doing handstands, um, that's something that vaulters have to train um, all the time because there's a lot of our maneuvers that require us to be upside down. Um, and so you just want to only have to be comfortable with that um, but you really do have to have the strength um, to do that, not just standing still, but it's on a moving apparatus at this point. So a lot of stability muscles there. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no like set way to do it. And I think I find that to be the beauty of the sport is that everyone is going to go through this sport a little bit differently. All of our bodies are a little bit different. Yes, these maneuvers are the same, um, of what they're asking us to do. But if you look at the journey to get there, it's gonna be different for every person. Um, I mean, just take like a typical dressage test for the horse. Yes, we know what we want them to do, but each horse is going to approach these maneuvers a little bit differently. Um, just whether it's in their movement or, you know, they're just a naturally nervous horse or they're super tense or some that are just way too relaxed, um, <laughs> need more energy, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. They're gonna approach that stuff differently. And so, but as long as you're looking at that end goal, really focus on the journey that it takes to get there. And I think that's what really makes vaulting super fun because you can really personalize it for yourself. Well, thank you, that was a great answer. <laughs> It was a good question. <laughs> All righty. So we have some other questions here, but I think a lot of these are going to be really more just from explaining more about the sport. Um, so a lot of folks are saying, you know, where can they see vaulting, um, whether it be in competitions, exhibitions, things like this, that, and the other. So um, just to give everyone a little bit of history with vaulting. So this is one of the... Um, FEI disciplines that's in the World Equestrian Games. Um, so it's recognized not only by the FEI, but then all of the uh, nation affiliates. So with us, it'll be uh, US Equestrian. Um, and then the governing body for vaulting here in the US is the American Vaulting Association. Um, and so we just recently um, celebrated our 50th anniversary um, of vaulting in the USA. Um, so that was a really big deal, um, this sport has been growing super fast um, here in the US and we're just so excited about it. And the biggest thing right now, especially for our club, is just getting as many people exposed to it as possible. Um, so just a little bit of history just of how our club really was formed um, is we didn't come into vaulting from the competition side of things. Uh, we came into it more from the and then what really um, excited the vaulters was um, just being able to perform. Um, at first, it was literally just show and tell for their parents, which then expanded into demonstrations at like the Land Rover three day event, national horse show. I mean, places that have huge, huge audiences. Um, and just that act of performing, that working hard and having a goal-oriented mindset is really was the driving force that um, really inspired them to then go into competing. Um, so from the competition side of things, um, our competitions, they can either be um, AVA recognized, which is the American Vaulting Association, or they can be unrecognized. Um, 
So our ABA recognized shows, um, those can happen really anywhere in the country. Um, some of our larger shows like our national competition will also um, be affiliated with US Equestrian. Um, and so it'll be kind of the ABA USCF national championships is how they'll name those. Um, some other competitions that you'll see here in the US would be um, CVIs and those are through FEI. Um, so those are technically international um, competitions going through the international rankings um, where we can actually have vaulters from other countries uh, participate in our shows and then vice versa for the American vaulters, we can go to other countries and participate in CVIs as well. Um, and so one really cool thing about the competitive world with vaulting is the vaulting world and by world, I mean literally worldwide, it is literally one big family. So competitions literally are just family reunions. Um, it's just, everyone is coming together. Everyone is so supportive of each other. Um, it doesn't matter what club you're from, what country you're from, what state you're from, what horse you have, this, that, and the other. The fact that you're participating in the sport, everyone's excited about it. And for me, that was something that was very, very refreshing um, and not talking um, negatively about any of the other disciplines, but it's not something, just this level of camaraderie um, is not the norm that I, in my experience, Absolutely. that I had experienced in some of the other disciplines, not saying that it wasn't there, um, but just as a whole for the discipline, this is huge. Um, and another really cool aspect about our sport is um, with our competitions, um, we have something, um, a little kind of policy in place where we can borrow each other's horses. Um, so we all know competing and traveling is expensive. It's not really the show fees that are the most expensive part. It's the traveling. It's all the time and everything. And so just even here in the U.S., we can have competitions coast to coast. And really, you only need to travel the vaulters because the clubs are just so generous in allowing for other vaulters to utilize their horses. You know, granted, they have the space on them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just something that really you don't see um, in the other disciplines. And even, you know, our competitions over overseas um, have the same thing. There are horses over there that are pretty much waiting for our Team USA okay. competitors um, to where, with the exception of like world championships, um, mm -hmm. like World Equestrian Games, we're not having to travel all of our horses across the country yeah, and vice right. versa. Um, and so even like when WEG was hosted here um, in the US, um, a lot of the USA clubs got together and basically there were horses that were provided for some of these other countries. Like I know Argentina, um, Russia was using uh, horses from the US. Um, that's just to name a few. Of course, some of the others, they would bring their own horses with them. Um, but still, even at that level, you have that camaraderie worldwide where everyone is just super supportive of each other. Um, that's so amazing. The competition really is it is a lot of fun. Um, it's very, very exciting to watch. Um, there's just something different. The costumes, especially the freestyles, um, mm -hmm. that just really is very signature to each vaulter. Um, and even, you know, probably for the average eye, the compulsories may not be the most exciting just because they're repetitive. Um, but for an actual vaulter, they're very exciting because we're there, you know, looking at how they're doing these awesome compulsory moves, getting these scores, mm -hmm. looking at these horses and just the teamwork that they have. And it's just, you know, for our club, we actually took a trip down there. Um, and that was kind of our little vacation was going to WEG. Um, and it was just inspiring just seeing that level of competition. And it just motivated everyone to just pursue even higher dreams and to then maybe one day they'll be um, on that stage. Uh, you just never know. Uh, but that's the thing. The sport has something to offer anybody that's interested um, to participate in it. Um, and so that's kind of a, um, just a little sneak peek of what we're going to be showing kind of through the rest of the day, obviously um, featuring the Hills Properties team here with Grace on 27, but then even showing, you know, some 
snippets of us doing some of the compulsory moves, you know, recognizing some of our Team USA members, um, some cross training benefits that we have within our vaulting world and just things like that, just kind of sharing it with the rest of the world, just anybody that's interested in it. We love new vaulters. Um, we love when new clubs are being formed, um, new horses. I mean, it's just a really, really exciting time um, that we're in. Uh, and so me personally, I'm just looking forward to all of the growth that we are going to be able to do. And just then again, just thank you, obviously, to the Equitana team, not only for inviting us, but then even incorporating the American Vaulting Association in this as well. I remember just you guys asking me very, very early on and yes. immediately I said, I was like, that's great. We can do that, but we can also do this, 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 and this um, because we want everyone to see it's really not just us. We're not the only club out here. <laughs> um, there are clubs all over the country and the biggest thing that we want, it doesn't matter who's performing. It's just, we want vaulting to have a stage and we just want people to enjoy and to share into the joy that we have in the sport. Um, so that's really just the mission across the board. No, that's amazing. And I think you touched on so many good things there between the camaraderie. Um, I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of competition in other equestrian disciplines, but even just <laughs> in the world as a whole, that's getting harder mm -hmm. and harder to find. So I right. totally get what you're saying about it being refreshing and mm -hmm. just feels good. <laughs> it really does. I mean, Especially just, I always say like your, some experience that you, experiences that you'll have in your life, um, vaulting are going to be the ones that are memorable. I'm um, yeah. not saying that other ones aren't, but <laughs> they just stick with you. Um, and then I think another thing about it, it just, it hits really close to the heart, especially for a lot of vaulters. Um, like our other coach, Michaela Klein, she's over in California right now, um, not able to join us today, but just a quote that she gave, you know, she always talked about vaulting being her safe place. Um, this is just the place where, you know, for her, her heart and soul goes into vaulting. She loves the horses, she loves the training, um, everything that has to do with the sport. And she's very, very passionate about the ideas that she has to help the sport to grow. Um, and she always wants vaulting to be just that place of just safety. Um, it doesn't matter, like I said, your backgrounds, where you come from, how athletic you are. It doesn't, none of that matter. Boy, the horses together. Hmm. Um, and so, um, I always really loved when she would kind of speak about that because it really, she's been vaulting way longer than I have, um, has traveled to Europe and competed on A teams as a flyer. I mean, she's done it all. Um, and so just having her um, over in Kentucky while she went to UK uh, was just such a treat um, for all of us. Uh, just her bringing that expertise um, from her club in California over to helping us start Fleur de Lis Vaulters um, here in Lexington is just, you know, everyone's family <laughs> at that point. <laughs> yes, and again, it's, it's something we try to do with Equitana is we went after the passion players. I feel mm -hmm. like you can't really teach somebody passion, but somebody who's already passionate can inspire mm -hmm. in somebody else. Absolutely. So that's really something we wanted to highlight um, in all equestrian activities mm -hmm. and just share those stories out of Equitana. Mm -hmm. So you really kind of hit the nail on the head there. <laughs> um, um, we, do you have any more questions? Um, I didn't want to touch it. Um, looks like we, um, so I'll just touch on that. And then the rest of it, I think we'll be able to share um, through the social media, continue sending the questions in. I mean, these questions really are great. Um, but I want to touch on the horses a lot of people were asking you know kind of what uh breed of horses that we use what's the other so i'll just kind of give an overview with it every horse is different um but really what horse makes a devolting horse first and foremost it's just going to be if they have the mind for it um the things that we are asking them to do are not normal 
Um, so in the training process, um, the way I describe it, it is a lot of asking permission. It's like, may I do this? May I move in this way? May I do this? Um, and each horse is going to come into vaulting just a little bit differently. Um, typically, what you will see in vaulting um, are going to be kind of your warm blood breeds, um, drafts and draft crosses. Um, what we're really looking for um, is, you know, horses that are definitely strong enough um, because you can have up to three vaulters on a horse at once. Um, so they have to have not only the size, but they also have to have the athleticism. So sometimes um, full drafts can vault, um, but a lot of times you'll find that they'll do some draft crosses. Um, so you're getting the size and the strength from the draft breeds and then kind of the athleticism from more of the sportier breeds. Um, so that is typically what you will find, especially in the upper levels, you're gonna see a lot of the warm bloods um, and some draft crosses there. Um, but really any horse that has the mind to do it, to all his little ponies, <laughs> all the way up to Samson. Um, he was like 19 hands high with mile high vaulters. Um, he was incredible, um, absolutely incredible of a horse um, and everything in between. Um, so if they have the mind to do it, um, they can vault. From the training aspect, um, my rule of thumb, you have to be patient <laughs> first and foremost. And then you've got to give yourself at least a year um, to there's just a lot that goes in. It's not just the vaulting, um, but we spend a lot of time uh, working on their balance um, and their suppleness, their relaxation, and they're also working on the lunge line. So we use a lot of dressage cross training with uh, the vaulting horses to keep them in shape. Um, as far as directions, typically at the upper levels, you're gonna see vaulting primarily done to the left, um, but we do vault both ways in competition. Um, our club, for sure, our warmups, they always start to the right. It doesn't matter what level you are. Um, they will vault going right and left. Um, and it's just good for the horses. It's very good balance for them. They need to be able to go both ways. Um, even though primarily most of the competitions, you will see them uh, tracking left. Um, and then also in that training um, aspect with the horses, you know, sometimes you need longer than a year. There are some horses, you know, you can work with them for a year and they decide, you know, this isn't the sport for me. Um, one thing that really sets vaulting aside, vaulting horses are worth their weight in gold. You will notice not a lot of them are for sale <laughs> because once we have it, we keep them. <laughs> um, but the thing with the vaulting horses is thinking of some other disciplines, like I'll just compare like thoroughbred racing, for instance, pretty much a thoroughbred as they're coming up, um, they're going to at least attempt racing and see how they do. Um, with vaulting, this isn't really something that you can just put a horse in <laughs> and figure it out. They really, like I said, there's a lot of asking permission. It is not something that you can breed into them. This is very individual to these horses um, to be a vaulting horse. Um, and it really does take a lot of patience. And so the thing you have to notice is just being able to read them very well. If they're not liking it, it is not worth pushing them through it. Um, it just, that can create a very dangerous situation, um, not just for them, but just for the vaulters also. And so we want horses that thoroughly enjoy um, what they're doing. Um, so just looking at, you know, the horse Goliath, Goliath is a very oddball. <laughs> Um, out there. Um, his breeding, because that was a question on here, um, he's registered American warm blood, um, but he is Percheron, Standard Bread, and Tennessee Walking Horse. Whoever decided that combination, wow. <laughs> um, and so he moves a little different, um, but vaulting is his thing. So I adopted him from the Equine Humane Center here in Kentucky. Um, and I did not get him to vault. He was just supposed to be my fun horse that I was going to train myself and it didn't matter what we did. 
we tried vaulting one day with him and it was just like that was what he was meant to do and so we continued with it there's a lot of folks that said i was absolutely nuts in thinking that he would ever become a vaulting horse but he it that's his thing i mean he loves to perform he loves to be the center of attention um u.s equestrian knows that he loves the camera um he's done some photo shoots you know of their kind of new apparel for summer and fall and he didn't care about the apparel at all he thought that it was the photo shoot for him so he kept blocking um <laughs> what we were actually trying to take pictures of but anyways you know he loves to vault and so we let him do it you know as far as performances go He's our main go-to when it comes to all of our demonstrations because it doesn't matter what is going to be in the audience, what outside distractions that they're going to be. He's the one that's going to be the cool, calm, and collected. And he just, he lights up as soon as he enters an arena. He absolutely loves it. Um, and there's a lot of other horses that really enjoy it too. And so we really do... Um, pride ourselves in our horses. Um, they are, like I said, worth their weight in gold. And they're, they're our most important team member because without them, it's just gymnastics and dance. Um, and they are our dance partner. And that's the whole thing. Vaulting is teaching you not only the strength and the balance and the coordination, but it's teaching you teamwork. And so our vaulters all know that we teach more than just vaulting. Um, they're also learning skills that they can take into their everyday lives as well. Um, there's just so much that we can learn just from interacting with these horses and just, you know, an event like Equitana that has not just all these disciplines, but there was even just some things in there that I had never heard of that people are doing with horses. And it, it's amazing. And I just think that that's so excellent that there is a organization that is bringing all of that together. Um, and so we're just more than happy um, to be a part of it. So again, thank you um, for inviting us, uh, for inviting the ABA. Um, we're really, really looking forward to it. I mean, obviously, a little bummed that we can't do it in person this year, but it just gives us that much more motivation to put on a really, really good performance uh, for next year. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to putting that together. Um, getting some new costume ideas, um, some themes going, and um, we're really ready to put on a great show for everybody. So, um, yeah. No, I, we cannot thank you enough, Mikhail. And for those of you who don't know, not only is Mikhail and his team coming out to do um, demos and some instructional stuff, but they will also be taking place in our night show, Equus Evolution, which we are so excited about. So, yeah, you mentioned new costumes, and I'm all... <laughs> giddy about mm -hmm. that um, absolutely but yes if you have any other questions for Mikhail feel free to keep an eye on both the Florida Lee social media pages and the Equitana pages today mm -hmm. as we'll be broadcasting both of those um, otherwise we hope to see everyone next October 1st through 3rd at the Kentucky Horse Park where we will finally have Equitana USA live and in person and I look forward to meeting you all there so excited <laughs> <laughs> thank you so all much right. Mikhail and Shelby <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. All right, have a good one. Thank you so much. You fun. too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.